If you want to help out and support the channel, there are a few things you can do. Go check out Flipside Gaming and use the promo code VOIDMAGE in all caps. This will get you 10% off all orders, $10 or more. And if you go shopping on TCGplayer.com, go use my affiliate link in the description below. That way, all purchases you make will go towards helping the channel. And lastly, go check out my Patreon. It's a more direct way that you can help the channel while also getting some more interaction. I appreciate all of your support. If you haven't already, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I want to talk about something that is very important to me. You've probably noticed over the last couple years, I really enjoy magic artwork. I tend to pick art that I find interesting from my backgrounds, so hopefully you guys appreciate that. I want to talk about one of my favorite magic artists, Ron Spencer. It's no secret magic art hasn't really been held to the same standard that it used to be. You could say that about a lot of things art related. This push for photorealism has gotten out of hand and it can end up having the opposite effect. Where the goal is immersion, you end up drawing more attention to everything that is wrong with the characters. For instance, in that new Star Wars game, they have the face scanning technology. They can show you that person's face. It looks realistic until they start to move their eyes, their lips, and it looks like some creepy mannequin, not a real human being. There's something to be said about showing emotion in a more convincing way through characters like in Pixar, animated characters that are able to show happiness and sadness in a more convincing way than a character with an actual human face. The same thing could be said for Magic the Gathering artwork. This push for photorealism takes a lot of emotion out of the artwork and that is why I like Ron Spencer. You see energy. It's not just about telling a story which is another important thing in art especially when magic is very story oriented. It's all about energy and excitement. After all, you are trying to sell this game. It doesn't even have to make any sense. You can see a card like Confusion in the ranks. You can see a card like Aura Shards and have no idea what the hell this is. But the nature of Ron Spencer's artwork, there's this violence. If art could be dangerous, that is what Ron Spencer's artwork is. Chrome Shell Crab. The more detail you add, not necessarily trying to make it look real, the goal of the art is to stand out and to grab your attention. Which again, newer artwork, trying to go for the immersion route doesn't really work. And I'm not going to try to tell you that artwork on Magic the Gathering cards is stellar or some of the best you can find because it is very niche specific to the Magic the Gathering fans that enjoy it. Once you go for people who are commissioned to do a lot more work like for comics, the quality does go up. And I'm probably a much bigger fan of comic book artists. But when I see something like the beautiful Crucible of Worlds, it looks like something you'd see in Silver Surfer. It makes perfect sense though because Ron Spencer was a fan of comics like Swamp Thing and Conan the Barbarian. That's really why he drew the way he drew. But even though it's nothing super special, just Vati Il Da, this older style of art and magic really made the game what it was. And there's nothing super interesting about the pose. It does have its own energy. It has a sense of motion. The same thing is true for Yogmoth's Will. Probably not even his better artwork, but one of the cards that people recognize instantly. More of that violence. But some of the better artwork honestly came from a period in Magic where people were starting to lose interest. This was one of the very first scary times in Magic's history. In the early 2000s, you had sets like Scourge, Odyssey, pretty bad sets overall. One upside being some stellar artwork. Again, you don't even need to know what the hell this is. It just has this electric quality to it. And if you're not a fan of Magic the Gathering, and if I were to show you this card, you would want to know more about the game. You would want to know more about this artist. Cabal Therapy, another very popular card. A lot going on here. If your art isn't telling a story, you at least want to have that energy, which is something I just don't see in newer works works of art. And I understand it's a completely different goal. There's also consistency. You want these characters to feel like they exist in the same world. I can understand that. However, you are leaving out probably the most important thing is that you want people, you want us to feel like we could exist in that world. 
and unfortunately when you see the artwork it's like the artist was told here's a human being she has hair she's holding a sword there you go and they just draw her like a mannequin in the most boring pose possible no energy no real story as much as i like gimli he's just a guy holding an axe with a beard how cool would it have been to seen this character drawn splitting heads open covered in blood Maybe not kid-friendly, but who cares? That would have been badass. But there's really the price of trying to appeal to everybody by playing it safe, which I really would have to say it's better to satisfy one group of fans than to try to placate everybody. Now, for a fun fact, if you didn't already know, Ron Spencer is the brother of Therese Nielsen, also one of the most well-known magic artists. Now, instead of the violent nature that you see in the comic book-inspired artwork of Ron Spencer, it is a lot softer and appealing in those ways, but different enough that I would also consider her one of my favorite magic artists. She tends to do her own thing. As long as it has some kind of purpose, that's the art that I can get behind. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think about magic artwork from Ron Spencer. Let me know who your favorite artists are. This is a topic that I hope to continue. I would love to talk about other magic artists that I'm a fan of, such as the legendary Richard Kane Ferguson, Rebecca Gay. The list goes on. There are a ton of them. You all have a wonderful day. Void here signing off. See you all next video. Just wanted to say thanks to the patrons who are supporting me on Patreon.com. Go check it out. There are different tiers with their own rewards. One of them is having your name in the credits of my videos. I know it's not much, but it's something that I can do to show my appreciation. Thanks again, and have a good day.